Hi, uh, this is John Conrad again, back with uh, another Yeti build deck. Um, so t t for this slide deck, we're going to go over, now that you have a game in an HTML Win8 framework, um, we're going to talk about how to extend that game with Windows Store API features that you probably wouldn't be able to get other places without doing a lot of legwork. Um, so we'll walk through the accelerometer, we'll walk through how to do the fancy snap view functionality for, for Metro or Windows Store UI. Um, we'll walk through how to get user profile data, so that'll be like getting your user profile pictures and names, names. Um, how to make use of your user's contact list, um, quick summary of how to integrate ads into your, your application, and then um, just a integrating the live tile features into your, your game as well. Uh -huh. So let's start with something fun. Um, so in Yeti Bowl, as if you saw the early versions, um, it was just basically using the keyboard or on-screen buttons. Um, however, with Metro, you can easily hook into the accelerometer if you're on a device like that, um, for instance, the Surface. Um, it's pretty much as easy as just listening for a new event in JavaScript. Um, you're going to look for the accelerometer dot or reading changed event um, and hook into that. And I'll actually show you where that's done. Um, all right, so in every app, we're, we're looking in the default JS right now. In every app, there's an app dot add event listener activated. This is given to you as soon as you create your application. So it should already be there. Um, this is where we're going to set up our XRometer for the first time use. Um, sorry. There we go. Sorry. Now you can actually see the code. Um, so basically, like I was saying, we have our app activated event that's given to you as soon as you create the application. Um, we're basically going to look for an accelerometer here, which is your device sensors accelerometer get default. Um, uh, if that's not null, then we know the device has an accelerometer. Um, and that then once we get that, we can apply some properties to that. Uh, the main one is just the minimum reporting interval. Uh, that's basically just how often you're looking for the accelerometer to update its um, position for you. Uh, you probably want to set this lower, depending on your game, just to save power and performance. Um, so, so, yes, the accelerometer. Um, so, um, so now that we have the accelerometer event, I'll show you guys where we're actually reading it. Um, that's going to be in the input.js. Um, so, most of this is just to make sure. So if they have an accelerometer, we're going to just basically call the accelerometer.current reading. Um, that'll give us an object that contains its x, y, and z positioning. Um, and with that, we can basically get the tilting and the, the speed of the device. Um, in, more de once in Yeti Bowl, we actually use that to control the snowball. Um, and it's done. It's basically, in our game, we treat it as the gravity. So depending on how you tilt your device, your gravity will change. Um, and that's simply done in the map.js function here. Um, and then we simply read off the solarometer.x. Um, and that gives us the tilt of the device for the gravity. Um, there's some extra code here that I can get into um, if there's more questions. but Sometimes you have to tell if the device is tilted upside down or um, like weird. Basically, you have to make sure the device is tilted how you think it's tilted. Um, but, so. but going on to the next section, um, uh, let's talk about the snap view. Um, so every Windows 8 application has to have the snap view property built into it, otherwise you won't be allowed in the store. Um, a lot of games do pretty 
bad stuff where they just say, well, you can't play if you're in staff view. Um, for Yeti Bowl, we opted to do something like leaderboards. Um, this shows all the hikers that you have, and it'll show how many times that you've you've killed them with your snowballs or how many times they've reached the summit and beat you. Um, this is actually fairly simple to implement. Um, so first, um, our snap view, basically snap view is just a div that lives in our default.html page. Um, so right here, we've got our snap view div. Um, and that's gonna basically contain exactly what you just saw in the slide, um, where we have our Getty data here. And our this is where our hiker data template is. Um, this has a lot to do with the binding templates, but we'll, again, we can get into more detail. But for now, basically, your snap view is a div, and that just lives on the page all the time. And you just want to make sure it's not displayed when you're not in snap view. Um, so there's a couple things you can do for that. Um, we opted to use the CSS3 queries available. Um, that's this media screen here and the MSU state snapped. Um, that's a, obviously a special Microsoft property. Um, there's snapped, there's filled, and full, I believe, is for when, when you're full screen. Filled is the two-thirds view and snapped is the one-third view. Um, and so essentially, that just says if you're in this screen, well, our content host is our main page, so that's like where our game would live or where our menu would live. And then our snap view basically switches displays. Um, normal CSS properties there, nothing too special. But so essentially, your snap view over here is just another HTML fragment that, as long as you're used to the web, good to go. Um, can do pretty much anything there. Um, so. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit, so say you need, wanted to do custom stuff for your snap view, animations, maybe its own code. Um, we can actually hook into events for our snap view. Um, and for us, that lives in default JS again. Default JS, we're going to come back to a lot. Um, it's basically for building your first app, it's probably where all your Windows specific stuff is going to live at the start. Um, feel free to make that more modular and better, but um, so basically just like a normal window, we can look for the window.resize event. This will fire whenever the user like changes the screen size in any normal metro experience. Um, so show you what that looks like if you're not familiar with the the Win80 experience. Um, why that's loading. Um, so basically we hook it in the resize event and we need the application view states. This is simply just an enum that gives you basically the snap filled full screen states. And then the application view dot value here is the current view state. Um, so we're simply going to just say, is that view state snapped? If so, we can do our custom logic down here, um, which we use for the WinJS processing that shows our hiker list and all that fun stuff. But like I said, just uh, more JavaScript HTML. As long as you're familiar with web languages, you're already good to go with all that. Um, but so snap view is where it lives in the third view, third view, or one third view, and you can moving the user moving like this will fire the window dot resize event for you, so you can control any behavior there. Um, Okay, next up, um, I'm going to talk about how to get the user profile data. This is a pretty cool feature of Windows. So when whenever you have a Windows 8 account, you, you have your user picture, your name, and a bunch of other stuff attached to that that your applications can actually use to do some cool stuff. Um, so in ours, 
so basically it's it's the two main namespaces you're going to need is the window.system that user profile and the user information and then you simply just call the get account picture to get that simple call gives you back the picture for whatever the user um, put into their profile and if it's default it'll just give you the the normal default picture um, the one caveat to that is it's not in a format that HTML5 can use right as like baseline um, you do have to create an image element and then call this URL dot create object URL on the user pick and set that to the user element to load it in and that works just how you would load any other picture then so so you do have to worry about load states and that kind of stuff whenever you're loading a picture like this so just make sure everything's initialized before you try to draw it anywhere or use it anywhere on the screen otherwise you're gonna get an error um, so. and that's so I'll show you the code for that um, so there's a little more here um, than the example but uh, in our game we actually do so since we need to rasterize the Yeti, which I talked about in the, the earlier one, we basically grab the user pick, put in our image URL here, um, throw it into our source, like I was explaining, and then when it's unloaded, we actually draw it to, the, to like a special off-screen canvas, and then save that picture profile of data so we can use it in the game without having to draw that picture and the Yeti separately every time. Um, Uh, there's a lot of other properties in the user profile data too that may be useful for whatever you're doing. You can get names, you can get telephone numbers, I think. Whatever the user fills out there, you, you have access to pretty much. Um, so be creative. Um, so. Um, next, kind of in that same vein, um, we're going to talk about using the contact picture picker. Um, this is really cool because the UI is kind of all built for you. You kind of just have to call the the API for it and you're good to go um, and it'll launch this this API here for you with all the contacts the user has already built out um, any sort of connections you just have to hook into the the event listeners um, so here's the API you need to call um, so you get you need to get a reference to a contact picture object that Windows provides for you um, this is in the application model dot contacts dot contact picture. Um, that'll give you a reference. Once you have this reference, you can simply call this contact async function. Um, what that does is it calls that UI we just saw previously for you. And then once the user has done their input, it will call whatever is in this then function here with the contact information in this property. I'll show you the code that we have for that. Um, so here's our, our here's our code. Um, like I was saying, get our picker. Um, there's a couple properties you can set on it. I think we just set select, um, which is basically just changes the button text. But if you read through the Windows APIs, there's a ton more stuff you can. Um, grab um, and then I'll show you where we actually consume the data um, so just as I was saying we grab the contact user goes through its interface um, grabs a thumbnail does just like the previous one where we had to create a URL from the object um, and then there's just a couple properties that you have to set, but essentially this is the code you need, and then you got the, the thumb URL. Um, for the contacts, for the packets manifest, I do believe you have to set a capability to reach the contacts. Um, I could be wrong though. No, I guess I am wrong. So, no, you do not need to set any capabilities. Um,
Okay, and just like I was explaining the code, you just get the contact from this. Um, okay, uh, so of course we all like to make money with whatever we create, um, and Microsoft provides you with a pretty easy way to get ads into your system too. Um, first, you need need to go to the URL here. There's a simple little SDK you need to grab. Um, once you grab it, you need to add a reference to your project, and then you can you simply need to set the source a script source on your page to the reference project. Um, let me show you what that looks like. Um, so you probably can't see it, but you need to go to the add reference here in the reference files. And if you installed your SDK correctly, it'll show up in that add reference under the windows. Yeah, so here we go. Here's the add SDK thing. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. Um, no, so. so you add that reference, and then you've got your add.js add living in here, um, which you don't need to look through, but that's where it is if you want to play around. Um, and then you simply need to add it, a reference to it, to your page, just like any other um, script you would need to add. So it would just be like script source. Um, so, um, yeah, and then you need to create the div element that contains your add control. Um, so you basically just need to create a div that has these data win control properties here, um, matching pretty much exactly here. Um, the two things you can set fairly easily. Application ID matches whatever application ID you're using, which you'll find in the package app manifest. Um, and then your add unit ID. Uh, on the SDK page, you'll have a bunch of those you can use. Um, basically, those control the size and the type of ad you can use. Um, so if you wanted a square ad, you would use a different one, or like a banner ad. Those are the things you control with the add ID. Um, but essentially, that's all you have to do to create an ad in your app experience. Um, Microsoft handles everything else for you. Um, you probably do need to set a package manifest capability there, um, like we were mentioning earlier, um, to go out to the internet. But other than that, should work straight out of the box. Um, and once you set your ad on the store, you'll start getting paid for it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, Next, uh, let's talk about the live tile. Um, I'll show you what one of those looks like real fast. Um, so on Windows 8, our live tiles are these guys here. Um, some apps will let you have the ability to change when the user is looking at the start menu. So the live tile will update these just asynchronously why the user like without being in the game the live tile will get updated um, so when the user is scrolling by they can see oh look what's this new thing in Yeti Bowl or whatever game you're making and it's a pretty cool experience um, so again it's another pretty easy API to to implement um, we just our big thing is we need the Windows UI dot notifications namespace there um, so that is Essentially, how we notify Windows that we want the live tile to change. Um, so, we're going to grab, there's a bunch of these, but from this notifications, we're going to grab a tile template type. Um, there's a bunch of those, um, like stuff without pictures, squares, rectangles, um, pictures and text. It's, there's a, probably about 50 of them, so it's probably got whatever you need. Um, and then from that template, we need to grab, or yeah, we need to grab the XML out of it to be able to modify it to like the text or image we want to use on the live tile. Um, so that's just simply this call, um, the tile update manager, template on it, throw the template at it, and it'll return the XML. And then if you used XML, you can do cool stuff with this and. Um, Basically, you just need to find the correct element, and that depends on your template type, so it might take a little finicking around to get exactly what you want, but essentially you're looking for 
like a text tag or something and then you'll replace that line or add to add data to that line that says like specifically what you want there so like for instance our first line is going to be yeti stats immutable because for our live title we actually show like what the player is currently done in the game so how many hikers he's defeated how many his high score that kind of stuff um show you that real fast um, So that lives in Yeti Bowl. That lives in our live tile.js um, file right here. Um, so there's a lot to this, more than template. Um, but most of this is just for our specific needs. Um, but so first, we want to call the clear. That clears out any previous notifications that the app sent to it. So for instance, if you didn't do that, and every time your app launched, you added a new notification, it would constantly add the same notification and just cycle through those instead of what you actually wanted to do. Um, you do then need to enable the notification queue. Otherwise, it won't. Windows won't see that it, something's waiting for it. Um, here we do some rasterization. Um, but the actual code for adding the tile is so is right here. Um, so like the example, here's our notification. Um, here's our template. Um, we add a couple more properties than I was showing you before, but it's essentially the same idea. We're just looking for elements and adding text properties or certain data to it. Um, then set up all the XML. If that's good, you can send it to the new tile notifications and then simply send it off to the tile update manager, create tile updater for application dot update tile notification. And that should set you up for a live tile just doing that. Um, and once you do that, you should be good to go. Um, Like I was saying, here's here's an example of the one we're using in Yeti Bowl. Um, it's got our user profile picture, our Yeti stats, our score, our climber kills, um, and then just our little Yeti icon from our app just to identify the, the program still. Um, all right, um, that's basically the window API calls. Um, is there any questions about those, maybe some more detail I could go into, um, that would anybody like. Okay, the API f library files, um, if you're looking for the reference, you need to go to, if you go to MSDN, there'll be a Windows category. You want to go to the Windows category and go to the desktop version, and that'll give you all the APIs for, you, for Windows 8 specific apps. Um, it's it's a little complicated because a lot of the APIs cross over, so you do need, need to make sure you're in the right reference. Otherwise, you might be using something for the phone that's not available for the desktop or vice versa. Um, so again, if we want to use the pictures, we sh I, I don't think the contact needs anything in the app manifest selected. Those should, that should be good to go straight off. Um, so. um, I guess is that all the questions I'll move on from there. Okay. So we just want to talk about basically if you were taking this game and wanted to actually build out something similar to it, where, like where would we go from there? Um, um, so to a Windows 8 device, a Windows 8 phone device, you cannot port the game over because unfortunately that does not take an HTML5 format, it only uses C Sharp and C++, I believe. So porting would not be easy. Um, um, so here's some game features you could possibly add in um, that we would add if we were building out the game. Um, we've talked about adding in a combo system, which would keep track of 
how many hikers you hit in one combo. Combo. Um, they add some power ups to the game. Like, say you hit five hikers in a row, maybe you get a super giant snowball. Add that to the game. Um, of course, all these would just be changing the snowball entity behavior, or something, or the hiker entity behavior. Um, so, like for hiker, different hikers, you would just create the hiker entity, but maybe have a large hiker entity that takes three hits instead of the one, and just overriding the behavior there. Um, and then, of course, you could add different mountains um, that maybe have inverse gravity or some other cool properties and stuff going on. Um, and that's just some stuff we came up with for the game. Um, if you actually, if you wanted to go into the Windows API features and add some special stuff, um, there's the share charm that you could, so you basically pass it images within the game, and then you could throw those out to a different app, like maybe a Twitter app, or that's essentially you're just, it's really similar to like the contact picker where you just need to send it an image in the proper format and it's just good to go. Um, we didn't really show the app bar. Um, I can show that real fast. Um, so the app bar is this guy down here. Um, depending on what your game is or what you wanted to do, you could. This thing's super customizable. Um, you can add buttons. You can make it look cool. Um, so um, there's definitely a lot of places you could go. Maybe that's your entire user interface is in the app bar. Um, but um, we. W a lot of times we use it for pausing, so if the user brings up the app bar, you can throw an event saying pause the game, just for that built-in Windows feature. Um, so another way to ex oh, in-app purchases, um, it's one of the things Windows pretty much provides for you is in-app purchases, which hook into the store very easily. Um, so that. There's a little bit of data management, but Windows 8 handles pretty much anything, like all the user receipts, so you don't have to worry about like if they've purchased anything. All that backend stuff's built for you. Um, so it's a lot of just like hooking up the the strings to match up properly. Um, and you set all the prices in actually outside of your app in the Windows Store um, UI when you submit to it. So all that stuff is held like on their server. So pretty much all done for you if you wanted to add hats or anything that makes people money. Um, another thing you could do fairly easily is cropping and editing of the images you pull in the profile. Um, what, like Currently when we pull in contact images they might not be sized correctly for placing on a hiker. Um, maybe the user would like to, it'd just be cool to add a cropping tool. Um, and of course, there's the settings charm, which um, a lot of these charms you can do a lot of stuff with um, if you wanted to. Um, so the charm bars over here, we have apps have control over the search, the share, and the settings. Um, so in here, you can pretty much add a bunch of different fields. We just have game options for now, but you could add like any sort of stuff here, and you can actually style it a little bit. Um, it's again it's it's like passing an HTML fragment to it. Um, 